Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair for you this evening. We have been working on this Jubilee pinball machine. And if you watched the first video, then you're right along with us. But if you didn't watch the first video, Matthew, <laughs> where were you? You should have you should have been watching the video. I was watching your other videos. I haven't uploaded it yet anyway. I'm just messing oh. with you. <laughs> So our our, uh, our video game this week, yeah yeah so we did a we did a video of this one whenever we got it in and uh, it's missing the play field oh there it is I see it it's over there the uh, somebody had cut all of the wiring to remove the head and we spent the whole video just basically fixing that so if you didn't see it go back and check it out but at the end of the video we got the thing plugged in. And we finally got some light bulbs to come on on the back box. And that's the extent of all we've been able to do to it so far. But, like we showed in the other video, this game is coming soon. So today's the day. Or tonight's the night. So I think the next thing that we're going to do on it is we're going to work through the bottom of this play, the, the bottom of this game. Now, if you, so if, if you get one of these, we're trying to show people how they can like save one that maybe washed up on a beach near them. Oh, uh, yeah, he, he figured it out. Matt's messing with a camera. He cannot figure out. He's got a Nikon camera. He cannot figure out how to take a picture with the thing. <laughs> so there's a button somewhere that you press. Here, I'll show him. <laughs> Everybody's going to give me a hard time. <laughs> he has this nice camera that he bought. So there are two mats. This is <laughs> this is arcade game mat. There's also a video game mat. Arca no, 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 camera mat. Camera mat. Yeah. Video game camera mat. Knows all about cameras. So if Camera Matt was here, he could show us exactly how to how to play it or how to use it. Mm -hmm. But Arcade Game Matt has no clue how to use the damn camera. There's a button that looks like you press it and it takes a picture, but it does not take a picture. So he can't figure it I, out. I think the sound's off. And the sound was off, so you can't hear it take the picture. So he has now figured out how to turn the sound back on. Especially second hand. I probably need to reset everything. Ba baby steps. But he's getting there. So while he's doing that, I'm working on this pinball machine. <laughs> so anyway, back to the pinball machine. Uh, basically, to get these things up and running, you have to go through and get every little switch clean and adjusted properly. Now, I don't... If they're a little bit off where they're, they're, uh, they, they're working, but they're not quite uh, adjusted perfectly, I don't usually adjust them. So if they're close, I leave them. But you do have to clean all of them. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean every one of these relays with the game off because there's live voltage running through some of them. Don't do that. But we're going to turn it off and then I'm going to clean every one of these little switches. So I've shown people how to do this many, many times, but just for a... a uh, yeah, this is a good one. Just for a refresher. You took a picture of the display case. I did. Yes. Yeah. See, I told him I could get it. I said, "Come, come on. I'm bro I'm Donnie's brother. I can definitely get it. Get it." Good. <laughs> <laughs> My brother Donnie would figure it out. All right. So this relay here, the way this thing works is, when this relay pulls in, it's going to do three different things because there's three different types of switches. And I'm gonna turn off the game so we don't electrocute ourselves. You have this left switch here, right, that when the relay pulls in, it closes the switches. So it makes that switch connect to the other blade there. So it's that switch is not connected, it's open, now it's connected, it's closed. The second one here, this one, it is now closed, but whenever it pulls in, it's going to open, right? And then this one, as well as this one, but this one, it goes both ways. It's a make-break switch. So it's connected to the one on the right right now. Now it's connected to the one on the left, and it is no longer connected to the one on the right. When it lets go, it connects to the one on the right, and it is no longer connected to the one on the left. So that's how it works. So to get, it, to get these things going, basically all you have to do is get it where all of that happens on every relay every time. <laughs> so... This switch is normally open. When the relay pulls in, it will close. All right? This switch is normally closed. When the relay pulls in, it will open. This switch is connected one way. When the relay pulls in, it will connect the other way and open up that way. 
and that's it's as simple as that. So all you got to do is get it where the relays when they close, it makes the switches change their state. From if they're closed, they should open. If they're open, they should close. If they're connected one way, they should open up that way and connect the other way. Simple as that. So I'm going to go through with a little tiny file, a real dull one. I'm not going. You don't want to use like a really aggressive file because it'll eat up all your contacts. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean every little bit of that and get every one of those uh, switches clean. Now the, the now that one that we were just looking at, I'm not going to adjust any of those. They were all working fine. But what whenever it moves, whenever the blade moves, so like this blade, you want the smaller blade that it touches to just barely move. And this one is just barely moving. Right? And see that one, how whenever we let off of it and it goes back and it touches the small one, it makes it go back how it... Uh, go back where it moves it slightly. And by moving it, it rubs the contacts together and they clean themselves a little bit. But what happens is these things sit around for forever. Like this one's been sitting probably 30 years somewhere. And you get all kinds of dust and dirt on the contacts. And so they never, they, they no longer uh, electrically conduct. So you need to go through and clean them all. And so the, the good news about these EMs is that usually you don't have to buy many parts for them, but you gotta clean all kinds of stuff. We've also got the score motor here with big stacks of switches, but it's the same principle. If the thing's closed, you want it to open up. If it's open, you want it to close up. And you just have to get it where, as those cams turn around with the little hole on it, it will make the switch stacks drop down into the, the little chip on the cam. And they need to open up if they're closed, and they need to close if they're open. So, just tons of cleaning, and that's, that's really all there is to fixing these things. Tons of cleaning. And then the, the little stepper units back there we'll talk about here in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to clean all of these switches. And we're going to try to get all of this done and then clean the bottom of the play field too, all of the switches on it, so that we can pop it back in and uh, see if by the end of the video we can get the thing up and doing anything. So uh, we'll get at it. All right, folks, so I'm doing the score motor here. And you can see what I was talking about. So each one of these cams has a little, some of them have a little ramp and some of them have a little divot. It's like a great thumbnail, look. You could put that on your, on your video. With words. Why the hell would I do that? It just looks cool. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he he did he did learn how to take the picture. It looks good. All right. So as this turns, you can see that it pops the switch up when it goes over the ramp and makes it touch. So you've got the same exact thing going on. Some of them will open. Some of them will close. So they're a little harder to tell what they're supposed to do. But usually, if you have any that are out of, out of uh, adjustment, usually it's the ones on the very top. Right? So on this one, you can see that it rides closed the whole time. But whenever it gets around to this little divot, yeah, that was it. It'll fall down and open them all. So each one's a little bit different. And basically that's all timed and this switch closes exactly when this one opens and all this stuff. And it's it's basically the the computer of the of the uh, pinball machine. Um so you got to get all of those clean and everything, same exact thing. It's a, if you see any like I said usually it'll be these top ones where somebody pushed something in the game and it hit it and bent it way up in the air and it's all messed up or something. Uh, so the, uh, usually if you have a problem, it'll be really obvious on one of these top ones, but it could be one of the ones in the middle too. It would just be harder for those to get misadjusted. They'd have to do it on their own because there's no real way to really hit them and mess them up down there. So, uh, that's that. Now I'm going to move on to this weird little thing in the back. I don't even know what this thing is. So I see it's got a relay up here at the top so this can pull in and make things happen and then it's got a relay down here which is like a score reel and as it turns around 
you've got one time when the switch is closed, this big leaf switch on it, and now the switch is open. Now the switch is closed, now the switch is open. That is just kind of how it does its thing. So it must have something to do with like putting in more than one coin. So like if you put in two quarters or something, maybe it can keep track of it that way, or two dimes or something, I don't know. But anyway, you don't really have to know. All you have to do is clean it. So I'm going to clean it and uh, get all the switches working the same as the other ones. And then that'll be that. All right, so we're going to mess with this stepper unit here. So basically these things, they have different steps. So as the coil pulls in on the back, it should go one way or the other. So this one makes it reset back to the first position. And then it steps up one position two position, three position, four position, five position. That's interesting. I wonder, I wonder what it even does. It must be like a coin unit or something. One, two, three, four, five. So that one's actually working pretty good, but we'll clean it up. Basically, we're going to use some very light grit sandpaper to clean the uh, the parts of the board that the, the legs of the spider, that they call it, slide over there. And uh, then we're going to use a little bit of synthetic grease on it to get it uh, where it moves nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Clean that up. And then on this side, you have a couple switches that need clean, but all in all, everything's pretty cool. Some people go crazy with lubricating these things. They spray crap all over it, spray WD-40 all over it and stuff. WD-40 is not good long term. It'll It'll... It'll work good for a little bit, but then the stuff dries really thick and and uh, makes it where it, you know you have you have issues. So uh, I just put like a little drop of three in one oil on it if you can, like in the shaft down there. But on this one, I'm not even going to dis disassemble it because it's so easy to get to the the parts. First of all, it's already it's still working, and it's so easy to get to the parts of the board that the spider rubs across. So it's very simple to clean it with some with just a little piece of sandpaper and. Uh, won't be any big deal. Now this one over here has more going on. I'll bet it's the player unit because it's a it's a looks like it's got four different steps. So let's see. Um, one, two, three. Yeah. So that's a one player game, two player, three player. But see how it's moving sluggish. And, I mean, it's working, but is it making good contact with everything like it should? Probably not. And you can see that the way they've designed it, on this one, you've got these contacts over here that do not have a, a spider on it. And they don't do anything. So they're only using this area here and this area here on the board. The other ones are on there, but they're just not, not even used. But on this one... Um, they've got more legs on the spider, so they're connecting stuff all over the freaking place. That changes. So what is it doing? Well, if, if it's like a one-player game and it's sitting like that, then it's sending all of the power from the play field to the one-player score reels, et cetera, et cetera. And then if it goes to a two-player, it has to move all of that. So it has to move all of the, the power so that it can now do the things just for the second player. You have to light up the lights just for the second player. And, Etc. Etc. So it's just a way for them to move power around with the stepper unit, but uh, you got to get them working pretty good though. So they've got to smoothly step up and smoothly reset. Now this one, they're both still working, so it should be easy. Um, we're just going to clean the the uh, contacts on the board there and uh, get it lubricated slightly. And we'll see how it looks whenever we get done with it. These also have this really weird switch on the other side. I've had trouble with this before. Um, there is this switch here that you have to get just right. So it, there is a little bar there that will open it up at a certain point. So it's now reset. When I pull this in, step a second position, third position, fourth position, and you see how they've they've got it misadjusted. 
basically, if this is misadjusted, you can still put coins in it and start more than a, or and you can hit start and start more than a four player game. So it's supposed to be. We're just going to bend it a little bit. It's supposed to be in such a way that it will stay closed for the first three steps and then open at the fourth step. So that's the first, second, third, fourth. It's still closed. So it's just little things like this you have to get just right. Gives you a little more. Second step, third step, fourth step. So I can't tell from here if that's open yet. But just little stuff like that you have to look for. Now, so if that if that switch is not right, what will happen is when you press the start button to start a game, it starts a one-player game. And then if you press it again, it starts a two-player, three-player, four-player. It should open that switch so the next time you hit the start button, it doesn't do anything. With it adjusted way up in the air like that where it never opens, if you hit it again... It would essentially try to start a five-player game, but it couldn't because it can only step up four spots, but it would still take a credit away from you. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Now, much worse would be is if that's open because then you can't start a game or you can't start a two-player game or whatever. Um, but we'll get it all adjusted where it works good and clean it up and show you what it ended up looking like. Okay, so as we went through it, I could tell that somebody has already been through it at some point, so this is not original uh, era dirt on these things. <laughs> Somebody's cleaned them up a little bit already because the uh, you can tell that somebody has already cleaned off the, uh, the the contacts on the stepper units. So after cleaning it now you get a nice clean step each time. First position, second position, third position, fourth position. Just how you want it. And I checked and I did have that, whoa, I did have that uh, switch on the other side adjusted properly. So I think those are good to go. So that one and this one. So I think, I think we got both of those. I got all of the relays cleaned. I got all the switches cleaned on the score motor. Um, the fuses are the right value. Check that. All of these little Jones plugs that plug in here, these are like little adjustments and things. They're all clean, so all of that should be good. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready to slide the playfield back in it and then work on the bottom of the playfield. But before I do that, I want to see what that thing is that I was talking about up there on the top left corner, that weird thing with the that's almost like a score reel. Now, usually all the stuff back here is for coins, so it has something to do with the coin door, usually. But we'll see if that's true. So I've got the manual right here. We'll see what they call it in the manual. Neat little thing I saw in the manual. It says, lubrication over lubrication causes far more trouble in coin-operated equipment than under lubrication. Practically all cases of poor contact on switches and wiper discs are due to oil or grease or oil vapor. Okay, which forms a film or residue on the contacts and will not allow current to pass through. Excess lubricant may also seem will may also seep into clutches, causing them to slip. Important never use Vaseline for lubrication of any part of the machine. Vaseline is not a true lubricant. It leaves a dirty and gummy residue and it becomes very thick when cold. Right? And then it says, a special coin machine lubricant is supplied with each machine. If you can get that stuff, do it. But 10 in 1 looks, works pretty good. Oh, and on the, on the contact discs, though, synthetic grease. That's what we like to use. And then this, too. A lot of people don't get this one. Solenoid plungers should not have a lubricant of any kind. So don't put anything on the solenoids, people. What are you thinking? What are you thinking doing that? Let's see if it tells us what that one weird thing is. Look, there it is right there. It's the alternator unit located on the mechanism panel, used in conjunction with the five cent relay for two coins, one play feature. Now, isn't that exactly what I said it was going to be for? So the switch, this switch is in the hold circuit to the five cent relay coil, and then this switch energizes the coin relay 
through the switch on the five cent relay. So it basically um, makes it where if you need to put more than one coin in, basically you put it in and this thing turns around but it doesn't have the switch closed yet. And then you put it in again and it closes the switch and makes it happen. So it's just a way for them to make make it work whenever you put two things in. So that's pretty cool. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take the play field, pick it up, slide it in here, and then uh, we'll, we'll basically be doing the same thing on the bottom of it that we did inside the cabinet. All right, so we got it back in the machine, but the first thing we have to do before we plug it in is clean these Jones plugs. So you can see where it's the brass is, is uh, through the tin. It's because somebody has already cleaned them up in the past. So they don't need much. Looks pretty good, actually. I think we're about ready to go. What's up with that one? I think that's fine. And then this one. Yeah, they all look pretty good. You don't have to really clean the back of them because whenever they plug in, nothing touches on that part. <laughs> it just touches on the front and the two sides. All right, so that's pretty good. So we can go ahead and plug them in. Um, and then I'm going to go through and just clean all of the switches on the play field while we have it up in the air. All right. Um, it looks like somebody's already replaced the light bulb, so maybe we're going to get lucky on this one. What do you think about that? The stepper unit here is the same thing. We've got to clean these little um, rivets. But it's the exact same type of machine, really. We just need it to step up and down. This one has a spring off of it. So look at this. Someone... I don't think that spring goes like that. I think that spring goes up on here, but I might be wrong. So I'll have to look at that. Might be something wrong with that. And then we've got a little board here with a bunch of relays on it, just like underneath. Same thing, we just need to clean all the switches and everything. So just same as same as always, just got to go through and clean switches, make sure that they open and close properly. And then I need to see what's going on with this. Whenever you do this, it just lifts it up. See how that's just jumping around? I think this spring, just my opinion... be around like that. It's more like that, I think. No, that don't work either. Well, that does get me stepping a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to have to look in the manual and see how that one's supposed to look. Something, Something's not right. Um, but just the same stuff. Go through, clean everything, and whenever I run into weirdo stuff, I'll let you know. Okay, so we got that cleaned up, a little bit of synthetic grease on it again. I figured out that spring that I was thinking, oh, it's in the wrong spot. It was not in the wrong spot, it's just this one was missing, but it was laying down in the bottom of the cabinet. And it's not damaged or anything, it just came off somehow. Um, so now, when you click one way, you go one way. And when you click the other way... You go the other way, so should all be good. And there is a little set of switches here. One closes and one opens. And like I said, all the light bulbs, somebody, they look like brand new light bulbs, so I don't know. We'll see how that works. All of these were very easy to clean. The flippers, I'm not going to mess with yet. They're, they're going to need some work, though. But we'll do that on a later video. Um... This switch here was adjusted way out. This is the out hole switch. The ball, when it lands an out hole, it, it makes that switch. It was, it was adjusted way out where it was barely touching. Now, that ain't right. But the most interesting thing I found was right here. On these games, they use these uh, ground braids. To, to and so instead of putting a wire to each socket, they put a wire to the socket, and then they have a, a braid that runs to another one, right? And they do that for all kinds of stuff. But it had this thing going on, and maybe we can track it down. Uh, 
it may have still worked, but for whatever reason, see all of the abrasion there on the play field? Something had broke the the ground in in half, so the 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 wire in half. So it was just kind of hanging there. I cut it off. Um, but I don't. It, it almost looked like somebody did it on purpose. I don't know how that could have happened by accident, or maybe a rat did it or something. But we haven't had a lot of evidence of rats damaging anything. Um, but because that was broke, I think it may have still worked though. It may have been a problem that didn't actually cause any problems because. The wire ran up to here and then doubled over and ran over to this switch and then came back and went to this one where it hit this yellow uh, wire here, right? And then it also ran up and went to this socket, okay? So it should have been connected here, which would jump over to this switch and up to here. And it misses this switch. This switch has its own wires. But it goes to this light socket. And then it goes to this switch. And then it sends power to the pop bumper for the, the light. And then it goes to this switch and this light. But look, there's two yellow wires here too. So these would have fed all of this. And then these would have fed all of this. Unless they were using the ground to get power to these two yellow wires or something. I don't know. But I think it probably would have worked without with that cut. But what I did was I put a little jumper. So I jumpered it from there to there just to replace the broken wire. But that was the only thing that was significant. Everything else is just a little worn. Some of the uh, inserts, they didn't clean behind whenever they put the new bulbs in. So I might have to go back and do that. We'll see how it looks when it lights up. But basically everything looks cool and like I said it looks like somebody had already serviced it. Now this bonus unit wouldn't have worked because that spring had fallen off of it. So without that spring it wasn't able to do its stepping like it's supposed to. And it needs to step people. If it's a stepper it needs to step. You gotta make sure your stepper step. So I'll put the play field back down in it and we'll turn it back on and see how she looks. Hopefully it uh Hopefully it's starting to, well, it won't look better because we haven't done anything to the playfield yet, but <laughs> maybe when we turn it on, we'll get lights on the playfield. Okay, so this is an old Williams. This is the first I've seen of the playfield in a while because we've had it out of the machine for a while. The first video, we, whenever we figured out all those wires had been cut, we took a little time off on this one, fixed some other games in between, and now we've came back to it, so... Um, I haven't seen it in a while, but the playfield actually looks pretty good. We had a little bit of wear over here. I think I'll be able to fix that. A little bit up there. I think I'll be able to fix that. We did. We already did a set of videos on this same machine before. It was either a Jubilee or a Darling. I can't remember. I think it was a Jubilee. Um, the Darling is the two-player version. But we uh, we had horrible damage to the playfield on that other one, where we had to repaint about most of the playfield. Um, and it just was the biggest freaking mess. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. Let's see if we get any lights or if it does anything. Now, when I turn it on, it may count the bonus down. Wow. Why would it turn off my lights? I guess it was just a... Maybe if I hit the left switch... No. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can start it and see if it'll... I, I understand why it counted the bonus down. It's because it wasn't on its um, home position. So I've seen them do that before, even when the game's over. You see the game over light is on. Um, but it's kind of weird that it turned off the uh, general illumination. But sometimes whenever you turn the games on, they do that. They don't have GI lights and then... Uh, until you start a game and you end a game. But I'm going to hit the start button and let's see if it does anything. So I, we haven't done anything in the back box. So it may not be able to reset its uh, its score motor. I mean its score reels over there. So I might have to turn it back off. Well she tried. It got back to 8,000. And then kicked the ball out. And it's still saying same player shoots again. So I don't know what that's all about. And our general illumination lights are still out. There they are. 
Well, we got some. We got an interesting one going on on this one. The GI light. The GI. The GI lights. Uh, come on for a minute and seem to somehow alternate with the same player shoots again when lit. Now. We'll be able to figure that out, but I'll tell you. We've got the schematic, so we'll be able to track that down, but I'll tell you, this could be that we got a wire crossed. Remember, we we, we soldered all the, wi the wires back together. Look, the same player shoots again light goes out and all of the GI lights come on. We're on ball four. <laughs> well, it seems like whenever you hit something that's 10 points, the lights come on. <laughs> wow, how strange. But you know what? I love that because that'll give us something to track down. Boy, I'll get a good video out of figuring out why in the world it's doing that, right? So we'll figure that out. But the game is actually playing. I just played a game on it. Not very well because I was playing with one hand. The lights are all screwed up. I doubt it scored like it was supposed to. Um, I got 16,000 points. That's probably about right. Uh, but it is kind of limping along now. And all we've done is mess with the, the cabinet. So on the next video, we'll, uh, we'll get in the back box and, and work through some of that stuff. But uh, at least we got it kind of trying to cooperate. It's trying to do its thing, right? Poor thing. The GI lights won't work. And it's got a permanently stuck on same player shoots again light. I wonder if they're the same color and they're reversed. What if we have the GI lights plugged in to the same player shoots again light and the same player shoots again light when it's supposed to come on the GI, the GI lights? Are on it. Hmm. Oh, let me look at the schematics real quick. So I don't know. The, the, sh the shoot again light on the insert and the play field are both connected to the yellow wire, which is also connected to the play field display lights. And then on the other side, the play field display lights should be connected to a uh, blue wire. And they shouldn't really turn on and off um, nothing they should always be on oh the lock relay if the lock relay goes off it would turn them off but if the lock relay goes off the whole game ends so there's nothing that should be turning those on and off which means almost assuredly we've got a wire across somewhere but if we've got yellow wires and blue wires going to all the displays I wonder if me putting that jumper on it screwed it up I don't think I don't think that's right. Because remember, so the yellow wires were connected to the the ground strap that I was talking about, or the the ground. The I shouldn't even call it. Well, I guess it is a ground. To the braid, the wire braid on the playfield. The yellow wires were connected to some of the switches and to some of the lights. But if you see, that is actually how it should be. There's on this side it connects to switches, um, and on this side it's connecting to lights. So I don't know. But the only way that the shoot again light should be on. It's a white and green wire. It goes through the extra ball relay. So it could be that like that white and green wire I've got mixed up, put in the wrong place or something. But we'll get to the bottom of it, people. Because if I don't, I'll never be able to sell this thing. i got to fix that, right? But we'll figure it out. So it's nothing obvious, though. But eventually we'll, we'll find that something's connected wrong or something. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think of it. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it this far for you. Hope you're enjoying the ride. I think this is going to be one of our most um, screwed up games we've ever fixed. That's what I think. I think this one's about as bad as any of them have been because of all of those cut wires. But, um, you know, the secret to folding these is they're folded in fourths. So if you fold it in fourth, it folds back up, and it even has the name on it. 
Um, I think I think this is going to be one of our most screwed up games that we end up fixing. But whenever I say that, I think back to like our Friday the 13th that we did. I mean, our, our uh, Nightmare on Elm Street pinball that we did that was just destroyed. It sat right here when we fixed it. Same spot. Right? And I think back to that derby day that we did that we ended up repainting most of the play field and everything. And the last Jubilee that we did, or the Darling, whatever it was, uh, had to repaint the whole play field. And that eight ball that we did, that all of the balls were worn off of the middle of the play field and we repainted them all. Or how about that stars, stern stars that we did with all of the wear where it looks like we had drug it out of a lake. So this one, this one may be one of our uh, worst because of all those cut wires and this back glass is destroyed, people. Look at that good. I'm trying not to say the Lord's name in vain as much as I used to. <laughs> Holy moly. If I could switch over to instead of saying good God, saying holy moly. Holy moly. And look at this beautiful woman with the screwed up hair. Becky with the bad hair. What's up with that? So this one's got serious issues on that back glass. Mm. But it's getting there. What's up with my focus lately on this camera? I might have to get another camera, I think. The focus keeps screwing up. If you change the... It doesn't like to autofocus anymore. But uh, there you go, folks. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And we'd like to thank everybody that's been doing our Amazon links. That's really helping us out. Uh, if you don't know about that, there's a link down below to Amazon. If you click the link, anything you choose to buy on Amazon gives us a little tip. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. Somebody on there earlier bought like an arc welder or something, something like that. So <laughs> that was pretty awesome. And if you haven't yet, check out our, our brother channel, my brother Donnie. I'm usually over there with him. He's really our brother and he's crazy. So go check it out. Um, we're working on an old little tiny building that we bought that we're trying to renovate and uh, rent out. And a lot of videos on that we've been uploading lately. So uh, go check that out if you haven't yet. The link is down below. So we'll see you on installment number three on this Jubilee. And we'll get a little farther on it. And we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. So see you then.